purpose of this video is to go over homework three, to go over the answers for homework three. Um, and as you can see here, uh, the first question, what is the mode of these scores? And as you look at these scores, the mode is the most frequently uh, mentioned number. And in this case, it's 15, because 15 was mentioned twice, so that's the most frequent number. Um, the same thing is true for question two. The two numbers that were represented was five and nine. They were both there twice, so that's a bimodal data set. Uh, question number three, the median. The median is uh, this number here that I added, but basically when you look at these four numbers, the median is the number that's in the middle uh, of those numbers. It's not the mean, you're not taking average of this data set, but basically um, it's four numbers, so you look at the two inner numbers and then you just find the number in between that. If this was a five number data set, uh, the third number in would be the median. So in this case, the correct answer is 13. Median uh, for this data set, what's confusing here is that they're out of order. If you put them in the correct order, 29 is the lowest, then 40, then 50, uh, 52, then 54. So 50 would be the median. Remember, it's just the middle number in the data set. 50% of the data is above 50. 50% of the data is below that median score. The mean is when you add up all these numbers and uh, the number that you, and then you divide it by six because there's six data points here, and the number that you get is 14.83. Question number six, what is the measure of central, central tendency that's appropriate for interval or ratio level data? The mean is appropriate for that. So if you think about age. Um, that is a ratio level data. Um, you could take the mean or the average of the age of the people in the classroom. Um, <clears throat> question number seven, um, should you use mean with highly skewed distributions? So if we think about income, we should not necessarily use income to describe um, or we should not use mean to describe the income because we have a large percentage of people who are you know, making a billion dollars, but the majority of people make you know, maybe $40,000 a year. So if you took the average, it would look like the average or the mean American citizen would have an average income of over 200,000 or something really, really high. Um, so it doesn't quite represent um, income, and so median might be a better choice, uh, is more appropriate for skewed data. Uh, what is the measure of central, central tendency that's most appropriate for describing nominal data? That would be mode, and so you all did this in homework number two, where you looked at gender and race. You're not coming up with the average race or the average gender, you're looking at how many people um, uh, came that were female or male. So that would be mode, the frequency. What's the most frequent gender represented? In your data set, it was females. Okay, question number nine. What is the measure of central tendency that's defined as 50% of the cases or the data points would be below it and then 50% above it? So that's the median. In a normal distribution, this is question 10, in a normal distribution, would the mean, median, and mode all have the same value? And that is true. Um, it, they would have the same value in a normal distribution. Okay, so then we have this case study. And basically in this case study, what happened is that there were three groups of people, all of which were procrastinators, all of which attended a one hour therapy session. During the therapy session, the three groups differed. The counselor said, um, you know, whatever their reason, the, the procrastinator, whatever their reason was for procrastinating, the counselor agreed with them in group one. So that's called the same attribution group. Um, in the other group, whatever the person, whatever the reason why they procrastinated, the counselor disagreed and said that no attributions were necessary to find a solution, that you basically you have no excuses to procrastinate, just get it done. Um, in the third group, it was a different attribution. So if the 
uh, procrastinator said, well, you know, I didn't get enough sleep. The therapist would say, well, you work too much, right? It's a different attribution. And uh, then here's the data, uh, what happened. And the uh, no attribution group had the highest procrastination here at 45 at intake. On outtake, they actually had the lowest procrastination. Um, so on average, which group had the higher scores? And so that was the no attribution group. So they had the highest scores at 45.7 at intake. But then it said, what is the greatest variability at intake? So the variability is referencing standard deviation, which is this right here, SD. So that would be the different attribution group because their standard deviation was 10.7. Then it asks in question three, which group had the least variability? This would also be the no attribution group because the, they had the lowest standard deviation at 5.9. Um, the fourth question, uh, which group showed the greatest improvement? Again, that was the no attribution because they started off at 45.7 but ended at 33.4. Uh, question number five, basically what you have to do for the no attribution group, you have the mean of 45.7 and the standard deviation of 5.9. So you need to go two standard deviations above and below the mean, and we did this in class, um, and the number that you should have gotten was 33.9 to 57.5, and that represents the middle 90 percent of participants. Remember, one standard deviation above and below the mean is 68 percent, two standard deviations above and be below the mean is 95 percent, three standard deviations above and below the mean is 97 percent. So question number six, um, did the mean score of the same attribution group fall within this range, and it did. Um, at 43.5, that's in that range, uh, so that's fine. And then here, the uh, what's the middle 90% for the no attribution group? Again, that would be two standard deviations, so that's 11.8 to 55. This one, 99.7, that's three standard deviations above and below the mean, and that would have been one to 65.8. Then they asked you to figure out uh, the different attribution group, if their range was between these two numbers here, um, what percentage of those people fell within that, and again, it's 99.7% because of three standard deviations. The final question, you have to interpret the results of this data. So um, basically, do you think one hour of counseling session would help you to um, to decrease in procrastination. So according to the data, yes, it would, because each of the groups decreased in procrastination. Um, however, we want to be clear that, yes, each group decreased in procrastination, but we don't have any information about whether that was a significant decrease. But you could just see here, 43.5 went down to 37, 45 went down to 33, 41 went down to 36. So they've all, they all decreased um, in procrastination. So counseling, regardless of the attribution type, counseling uh, reduced procrastination. But again, we don't know if this was significant or not. But regardless, this shows that counseling was successful at reducing procrastination. Okay.